I'm Professor Rad, and this is Pre-Calc Video 326, Using Your Calculator to Solve Trig Equations. So in this video, we'll be using your calculator to find approximate solutions to um, trigonometric equations. And we're going to look at just one example. So we're going to solve this one problem, but we're going to look at two different ways of solving it. And it's really up to you which of these methods you'd like to use. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So for the example that we'll be looking at, we're going to use our calculator to solve the equation tangent of pi x is equal to 4 minus x cubed, and we're going to solve this on the interval from negative 1 to 1. Now, my graphing calculator has decided it no longer wants to function, and uh, its replacement has not arrived yet. So um, we're going to be looking at the graphs of these functions in a graphing program, which is called Graph. Um, it's a free download um, if you were interested in it. Um, but my expectation is you'll be using your calculator to solve the equation. And I'll show you how you can do the new stuff with your calculator. So just as, um, yeah, so let's, let's go ahead and let's solve this equation. So the first thing that I'm noticing is that uh, we're solving this equation on the interval from negative one to one. So what that means is I need this x-axis to go from, not from negative six to positive six, that's a little bit bigger than what I need to be looking at. So I'm going to adjust my window so that it goes from negative one to one. So I'm just gonna do that quickly in this program. Okay, so I didn't change the y-axis. I might need to, but I'm not sure. Remember, you can do that on your graphing calculator by going to window and adjusting your um, x min and x max values. Now, the first way that we're going to solve this equation is by using um, the intersect function on your calculator. So the way that we'll do that, we're going to treat the left-hand side of this equation like it is its own function. So we're gonna use tangent of pi x, like it's its own equation. So you're gonna go up to the y equals button and type in um, tangent of pi x for y1. And uh, if we graph that, that's what this is looking like here. So you can see that this is clearly the tangent function. Um, it's got the tangent shape and uh, its asymptotes are happening um, at a half because the asymptotes for a tangent happen at pi halves. Then we're going to graph four minus x cubed as the y2 equation. So on your calculator, you would scroll down to y2 and you would type in four minus x cubed and it will graph that function. So what's nice about having your window set to negative one to one on the x axis is we can see clearly that these two functions are intersecting in just two places. So what we're going to need is we're going to need to figure out where these two things intersect. So what I will do um, on here, um, so I'm just gonna set this up real quick. Yeah, there we go. So what you'll do on your calculator to access the intersect menu, you're going to go to second and then you'll click on trace and that's going to pull up the calculate menu. So we're going to want option number five, intersect. Now, when you do that on your calculator, at the bottom, it's gonna ask you a series of questions as we're accustomed to it doing now when we calculate stuff on the graphing calculator. It's going to ask you for the first function and the second function, and then for a guess. So you'll just move the little spider, you'll use your, your wheel pad here to move the little spider to the different functions. So uh, you should notice it scrolling along one function. Okay, so it might scroll along like in this case y2, or more likely than not, it'll be scrolling along y1. So you just wanna make sure you can clearly identify which function it's on, um, and then hit enter, and then it'll go along the second function, and you can hit enter. And then in this case, if I were to make a guess, I would probably make a guess of negative 0.6, um, or you can scroll your little spider over to there. So what I'm getting is that the x value is about negative 0.575. If we're rounding to the nearest thousandth, let's do that. 
So that's one X value where the two functions are equal. So that's gonna be one solution to the equation. Then to find the other solution, you're gonna go through the same process on your calculator. So you're going to hit um, second trace. That'll bring up your calculate menu. You'll hit five again for intersect. And then once again, you'll identify Y1 and Y2. And then on this one, I'd probably make a guess of 0.4, or you could scroll the little spider to over here. And now we're getting an X value of about 0.421. So these two functions are also um, equal to each other when X is about 0.421. So that's how you would find your solution um, to this equation. We don't care about the Y value, we care about the X value because the equations or the expressions are in terms of X. So that's one way to solve an equation using your calculator. You can see where the two sides of the equation end up intersecting. All right, let's look at another way that we can use a calculator to solve. Okay, so now we're going to repeat this example using a second technique. Now you can see I've still got my graphing space, my window is going from negative one to one. So um, that part's gonna be the same because that's the interval that we're looking for a solution on. Now this time to solve, instead of thinking of this as one function equaling another, what we can do is we can look for the zeros of the function or for the x-intercepts. So to do that, I'm gonna take my equation and I'm gonna bring everything over to one side. Now you could subtract tangent of pi x from both sides, but I chose to subtract four and add x cubed to both sides. So now this is giving me the function tangent of pi x minus four plus x cubed, and that function is equal to zero. So what I can do is I can graph the function y equals tangent of pi x minus four plus x cubed. So this is another way of solving this problem by graphing um, just one function instead of two. And now because we have one function, we want to know where we are intersecting the x-axis because we want to know when this function is going to equal zero. So uh, we know how to do this um, from before, but we'll review it. So on your graphing calculator, you're going to go to second trace, and that will once again bring up the calculate menu. And now we want to choose option number two zero. So we're going to be calculating the zeros of this function. Now, when you choose this function on your calculator, it's going to ask you a series of questions again. It'll ask you a left bound, a right bound, and a guess. So for this one, I might do for my left bound, maybe negative 0.8, my right bound, negative 0.4, and for my guess, negative 0.6. And then uh, when I would click on uh, my guess, um, I'm going to get negative 0.575 approximately. So that was our first solution that we found using the other technique as well. Then I'm going to go through this process a second time. I'm going to hit second trace, and then that will bring up our calculate menu, and we'll choose option two again. And then I could pick a left bound, perhaps zero, a right bound, perhaps one, and a guess of perhaps 0.5. And that will give us our second zero, which is about 0.421. So this is again, the same value that we found using the other method as well for where the two functions intersected. All right, so that's gonna be about it for this video. Just a, a quick example to see how we can use our calculator to solve a trig equation. Um, in the next video, we're going to start working now with trig properties again and thinking of trigonome trigonometric expressions as having their own kind of algebra. So we'll be simplifying trig expressions in the next video. I hope this video helped you to use your calculator to solve trig equations, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now.